Okay. Yes. Thank you, the IMSC board, for organizing the annual symposium through online. Hi, everyone. My name is Ka Keng Lim, and today I'm going to present my thesis work that I have been conducted at Kaos on the population genetic of the small giant clam, Chardana Maxima, in the Red Sea. And this project was supervised by Professor Carlos Duarte and Dr. Esther Serrao. So, population genetics is a discipline that study about the genetic variation within populations and the processes governing this variation over space and time. A population can be simply the group of interbreeding individuals that exist together at the same time. Genetic variation shows the degree of differentiation that can be found among individuals. Like in humans, in between individuals, we can find the differences in terms of body height, eyes color, and blood type. The power of population genetics is to help us to inform how individuals of a species population are closely related to each other, thus has the implication for the marketing area of conservation. So my study objects, why giant clams? Giant clams are actually known as the largest living bivalve that exists on the earth. The smallest species that is illustrated here, the Tridana crocea, can grow up to 15 cm long. Whereas the true giant clam species, the Tridana gaigas, can grow over a meter long and weigh up to 300 kilograms, which is equivalent to, equivalent to the weights of three baby elephants. Giant clams, they are normally distributed in the Indo-Pacific, including Singapore, Malaysia, and Philippines, and also Indian Oceans. They were generally found at a reef area less than 10, 20 meters deep. This picture illustrates the size of the giant clam compared to a human being. Giant clams, they are also known as the ecosystem engineer as they provided multiple ecological roles to the coral reefs. The high tissue biomass of the giant clam can serve as a food item to a wide variety of the predatory fish. These include the pufferfish and triggerfish. The mental cavity of the giant clam can also provide a shelter to a wide variety of marine fish, commensal, and parasitic organisms. Giant clam, when occur in dense number, they can contribute to the 3D heterogeneity of the reef by adding the calcium carbonate material into the reef structures. Giant clam also acts as the source of the symbiotic sea day, or formerly known as the symbionidium. Symbiotic, they are a single cell algae that live symbiotically with the giant clam that provide nutrients to the giant clam. So in the Red Sea, we can find three out of the 12 excellent species of the giant clam in the world. That include the rare species Tridana squamosina. Tridana maxima is a being the most abundant species followed by Tridana squamosa. However, the population of the giant clam in the Red Sea has been declined in the past decades due to overfishing Coastal, de coastal development and pollutions. Giant clams, like other marine invertebrates, they have a short planktonic larva stage. Such life, life, such life history has complicated our understanding towards their marine connectivities. Therefore, population genetics can provide us with the information about their spawning and recruitment pattern. The connectivity pathway in a marine environment are driven by an interplay of physical factors and lava traits. Previous study has found that the incorporation of the genetic material into, together with the oceanographic information is useful to estimate the marine mollusk connectivity. And Red Sea is a good place to test such hypotheses because the major channel of gene flows among the reef communities in the Red Sea are mainly driven by the eddies and surface currents. Nevertheless, the marine invertebrate taxa is still under study in the Red Sea. Therefore, we have limited genetic diversity information about them. Also, previous study only covered a small sampling areas. In order to bridge the gap, I have formulated two objectives. First is to determine the population structure of the small giant clam that cover the entire east coast of the Red Sea. Second, to investigate the genetic relatedness of the small giant clam population using the mitochondrial markers. My study area, the Red Sea, is a water inlet in the Indian Oceans that stretches approximately 2,000 km from the Bau El Mandeb and diverges into Gulf of Suez and Gulf of Aqaba. Combining with the six sampling sites from the previous studies, in total, 14 reefs were generally divided into three provinces that cover a wide range of salinity and temperature gradient. All of my sampling sites were conducted 
at less than 10 meters deep. This picture illustrates the site survey. So we deploy a belt transect on the reef, and along the transect, whenever we encounter a giant clam, the mental tissue of the giant clam were cut, and then they were kept in vial, labeled with the giant clam number and location, and these tissue were then kept at negative 80 degrees Celsius in seawater for further lab analysis. So in lab experiment, we extract the genomic DNA of the giant clam tissue by using the Q-agent DNA-C blood and tissue kit. The extracted genomic DNA was sent for an integrity check by using the fluorometer. This primer was chosen according to the previous literatures. To set up a polymerized chain reaction, or simply known as a PCR, the Q-agent multiplex PCR kit was used, combining with the primers and the genomic DNA of giant clams. This slide illustrates the setting for the PCR machine. So it was started with an initial denaturation, followed by a series of thermocycling processes and a post extension. The PCR product were then big clean before I send it for single sequencing. The thermocycling process remained the same for the 16S marker, except we have lowered down the annealing temperature and annealing time. For data analysis, I use Genome's Prime software to align and to trim the sequences. The alignment were then exported to the MEGA software to translate those sequences into amino acid to check for stop codon. This step was performed to make sure that I obtained a functional gene. I also used this software to find the best substitution model. The alignments were also exported to the DNA SP software to convert the FASTA file into Nexus and Alloquin file. The Nexus files were then exported to the pop up software to draw the haplotype network. The Alloquin file was then exported to the Alloquin software to calculate the genetic diversity, to conduct the neutrality test, and to perform the mismatch distribution analysis and AMOVA. So, of 129 samples of the small giant clam specimen that were sequenced, 126 of them were successfully amplified using the CO1 markers, and 127 of them were successfully amplified using the 16S marker. However, the 16S mitochondrial fragment sequence were used for species identification in case I fail to amplify the small giant clams sequence using the CO1 marker. Therefore, they were excluded from further analysis. These 126 uh, of the mitochondrial CO1 sequences were then combined with the 68 sequence that were downloaded from the gene bank, and I obtained 67 haplotype with 55 singletones. This is the haplotype network of the small giant clam in my study area. Each circle represents a unique haplotype, and the line connecting between circles represents a mutational step, where the hatches represent the additional mutational step. On, over here, in the, here, we have the location of the small giant clam population sample in the Red Sea. Pie charts represent the proportion of the haplotype clades per site. As you can see here, the top and also the southern province are mainly driven by a permanent cyclonic eddies, whereas the central province is driven by an anticyclonic eddies. Clade 1, 3, and 5 were the most common clades that I can find across my sampling site, whereas clade 4 were only evidence in four populations, that is in population 2, 8, 9, and 11. And last but not least, the CLAT2 was only being found exclusively in population 3. So my result shows that there's no significant genetic structure of the small giant clam was found in the Red Sea. However, Djibouti was genetically differentiated from the rest of the Red Sea population except Yembu and Haas Island. The highest fixation index and variation among groups were obtained using hierarchical AMOVA when I define them based on four different water basins, which is the Gulf of Sousse, Gulf of Aqaba, Red Sea, and Gulf of Aden. In terms of genetic relatedness, the genetic diversity of the small giant clam was generally high. However, we still observe low genetic diversity in Egypt and some population in the central Red Sea. Such low, low haplotype diversity could be caused by bleaching event, anthropogenic activities, or overharvesting. However, the causation factor of the bleaching event can be ruled out, as my colleague hasn't observed any giant clam bleaching during the past major coral bleaching event in the Red Sea. 
The coastal development, for example, dredging and landfilling can cause habitat destruction to the nearby reef. And this can cause the depletion of the genetic diversity of the giant clam due to the loss of genetic polymorphism suffered during the population bottlenecks. The meats and shelves of the giant clam were heavily exploited in the Egypt and Jeddah during the past decades, where the giant clam collection were part of the traditional fishery practice and they consumed, the local community consumed the giant clam meat as a primary food source and they also uh, harvest the shell of the giant clam to make them into a decorative item sold for the nearby tourist market. In terms of historical demography, significant ne negative nutrient tests suggest a sudden population expansion of the giant clam, and this clam was supported by the insignificant HRI value. The shallow population structure of the small giant clam in the Red Sea could be caused by their demographic history. During the Pleistocene and Holocene, Red Sea experienced limited gene exchange with the Indian Ocean through the Straits of Bal al Mandeb. However, such claim has been argued by one recent study where they found out that the Tridana Maxima, which is the small giant clam, has actually recently invaded into the Red Sea from the Mumzabic Channel. In terms of the population structure of the giant clam, no significant structure was found. Rather, my results suggest panmixia and high gene flow among regions which is contradicted to the finding from the previous study, where they found a genetic break around 19 degrees north in the Red Sea across a wide variety of marine taxa. The absence of population differentiation among the small giant clam spamming an area more than 2,000 km indicate the successful larvae dispersal of the small giant clam, and this could be caused by several factors. The ocean current can form a physical barrier or act as a vessel to transport the giant clam larvae. The larvae of the small giant clam can be trapped in these permanent eddies in the Red Sea and travel among distant reefs in less than two weeks' time. The short pelagic larvae du duration coupled with the high speed of the current can actually facilitate the successful dispersal of the larvae before the energy reserve became depleted or before metamorphosing into juvenile downs. Mode of the reproduction of the small giant clam also play a role. They are known as the protentic, protendric hermaphrodite, which means they first mature as male and they bear both male and female sexual organs throughout the rest of their life. They are also known as the broca spawner, where their fertilization takes place externally. This can favor the long term dispersal of their gametes. Previous study also found out that the small giant clam was actually a summer breeder in the Red Sea. During the summer season, the water in the Southern Red Sea is refreshed by the Gulf of Aden Intermediate Water. These cold neutron rich water are circulated within the Red Sea via the eddies and coastal currents. Provided with the right season and also right water temperature, it actually helps to enhance the survival of the giant clam larvae and thus expand the widespread distribution of the small giant clam in the Red Sea. Last but not least, the genotypic fitness of the giant clam also play a role to help them to tolerate and outlive the prevailing environmental condition in the Red Sea. While the effect of salinity change has minimal effect on the survival of the larvae, the thermal tolerance of the small giant clam might explain this better. Previous study conducted by Papas et al. in 2017, they have found out that the symbiodinium, or formerly known as the clay air symbiodinium, is actually responsible for the giant clam to help them to adapt to the extreme condition in the Red Sea. Two minutes. So the take home message for my presentation is that the small giant clam, Tridana maxima, exhibit minimum population genetic structure in the Red Sea, but genetic differentiation from the Gulf of Aden. Such complex genetic population structure and pattern of the connectivity of the small giant clam could be caused by the oceanographic feature, mode of reproduction, and the genotypic fitness of the small giant clam themselves. Future studies should utilize the next generation sequencing technology to provide a better calculation of the giant clam connecti connectivity in the Red Sea. And these are the references that I use for my presentations. And before I end my presentation, I would like to thank my promoters, my supervisor, and my colleagues who have helped out throughout my species period. And with that, I would like to thank my uh, with that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you. Any questions?